For question 3c, it says, for another spinning toy, the volume is 2 pi cubic inches. So what's the value of c for the spinning toy? To do this, again, we're going to, first of all, spin this around, and we're going to use this as our radius. Okay, so this will represent the radius, and the radius is going to be cx root 4 minus x squared. Okay, so that represents the radius. And we're going to find the volume of this spinning object by using pi r squared times some thickness. And we're going to call that thickness dx. Okay, and we're going to sum that all up. And we're going to do that from some point A to some point B. So we need to then figure out our bounds. So we already knew our bounds from previous. So it's going to be from 0 to 2. So the volume of this spun object is going to be pi times the integral from 0 to 2 of pi r squared. So r squared is going to be cx square root 4 minus x squared all squared and give it some thickness dx. Okay, so there is our integral expression. We need to integrate this. And I'm just going to pull out a few things here. So we're going to end up squaring these terms. So we end up with c squared, x squared. And when we square the square root, we end up with getting rid of the square root. I'm going to pull the c outside. So the volume is equal to c squared pi. And that's going to be the integral from 0 to 2 of 4x squared minus x to the power of 4 dx. Okay. So then I need to just anti-differentiate to work out the volume of this and figure out what c can I plug in to make it equal to 2 pi. So this looks like this. So 2 pi is my volume in cubic inches. And that's going to be calculated. Oops, that's not going to be time. It's going to be times here. Okay, so it's going to be times, and so c squared times pi times whatever this integral is. And I'm going to actually anti-differentiate this. So this is going to work out to 4x cubed over 3 minus x to the power 5 over 5. And the bounds of are going to be from 0 to 2. Okay, so then I need to just solve this equation. I need to work out this portion of that. So again, I'm going to write it as 2 pi is equal to c squared pi. I can see that the pi's are going to can cancel out, but I'm going to work this out first. I'm plugging in 2, so I get 4 times 8, which is 32 over 3, minus 2 cubed, or sorry, 2 to the power of 5, which is 32 over 5. And then when I substitute the 0 in, I get 0. So I'm going to cancel the two pi, the pi's out here. So I'm going to end up with two c squared. Sorry, 2 is equal to c squared. And working this out, I end up with 32 over 3 minus 32 over 5. So this works out to be 160, so times 5 times 5, and it gives me 160 over 15. I'm going to times by 3 times by 3, so it's going to give me 96 over 15. Okay, I'm just going to move this over to here. So I end up with 2 is equal to c squared, and this simplifies to 64 over 15. Okay, when I subtract those fractions, solving for c, I'm just going to multiply it to the other side. So I get 30 over 64 is equal to c squared. Solving for c, I get square root 30 over 8. And so the c value is going to be root 30 over 8. Okay, so if I have a c value that vertically expands this expression, it looks like it's going to be a little bit less than uh, 1. Okay, so we're going to 
end up with a C value here that's going to give, when I spin this object around, when I generate a volume of that, that volume will represent that 2 pi cubic inches.